Hey, what's up, everyone? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. My goodness, what a great report. And hey, it's still Saturday. It's still April 6th. And uh, yeah, you're going to be getting this one here tonight. So we have uh, what they call, uh, what the French call, les bangers. Uh, we have quite a few of them. Um, hunters and searchers have been absolutely murdering the hunt here lately. And we have more, more big coins to talk about here on the Pocket Change Market Report. Uh, so if you're out there, you're at the club, you know, you might as well step out for half an hour and, you know, check things out on the report because, you know, this uh, <laughs> the, this is a uh, must-see TV, I guess. Um, or if you're watching WrestleMania, hit the pause button and then, you know, come check things out on Blue's uh, video. Uh, but all things considering, okay, we're going to take a look at some of these wild finds that folks like you and I have discovered out there. Um, all raw, ungraded, uh, unsolicited, uh, you know, it, it's all on here, baby. And, um, you know, um, like I said before, we don't talk about graded coins, you know, the errors and varieties out there certainly speak for themselves. Not to mention some of the non-errors and varieties that you can also find out there, which are also really good too. Those key dates, some really nice type coins, you know, they, they can find and make their way onto the list as well. Um, so rest assured, uh, we're going to be looking at everything within the last 24 to 36 hours, right straight from eBay. If you have the ability to take a few photos and, um, you know, this is key. A lot of people don't realize you have to type the right information in your listing title so that way it figures into the eBay algorithms. Because if it's not there, you're not using the correct key keywords, you're not correctly attributing or diagnosing your variety or error, it's not going to work out too good. So make sure you polish up on that. You do some research beforehand before you take part in the resale of said coins and you're going to end up doing okay at the end. Um, so no graded coins. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, all of the original photos that you're going to see here today are 100% original to the seller's listings. We didn't juice or doctor or do anything funny or, um, extraordinary to make these video, these photos look better than what they actually are. You're going to get the best and the worst that eBay has to offer, you know, and the good news, good news to each and every single one of you, that bar is set pretty damn low. So, you know, if, uh, if you know how to operate a smartphone, you know how to work around your camera there and make sure you keep that lens clean. That seems to be one of the things that, you know, trips up a lot of people. Why do I have constantly out of focus photos? Well, it might be that big old greasy fingerprint on the lens. You'd be surprised how much of an impact that would make. Um, so as we go on here, I have a pretty big announcement. Uh, that I wanted to share with you guys, okay? Whatnot for the month of April on Blue Ridge Silverhounds channel is going to be absolutely huge. I have acquired today three GSA Carson City Morgan dollars that we are going to be giving away at the end of the month. Um, and how do we get in? All right, it's real simple. Just come to my show. I do two auctions every week. I do a big bargain show on Tuesdays. I do a relatively decent bargain show on Fridays as well. And just buy something. You just need one entry for every item that you buy in the month of April. You will receive one entry. Um, today's the sixth day of the month. Okay, we have a whole other 24 days left over, which, which means we, we have probably another seven or eight shows between now and the end of the month. To take part in uh, the GSA Carson City giveaways. It's only for buyers. All right. So we're going to do a randomizer at the very end of the month uh, with all the entries. Uh, we, we even already have a couple people with 30, 40 entries for the April buyer giveaway coming up at the end of the month. So if you're brand new, you want to check things out. You want to add a couple neat coins for a relatively low price. Come check me out. My referral link is down below in the description box. You will receive $15 in store credit to use right away. 
that's good for like two, three, four entries, you know, because we do sell coins for two, three, four dollars. So, uh, yeah, that was funny. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to take part, you know, we have the three GSAs and then we're going to also throw in a few other coins. At the very least, there's going to be five or six giveaways at the very end of the month. Uh, two shows guaranteed. So come check us out. Thank you to everyone else for all the views and support. And let's go ahead and rock this out. April is going to be a month to remember. And I'm looking forward to delivering the goods and giving away some pretty pricey gift items here in these Carson City Morgans. All right, let's go ahead and check things out here uh, on eBay. Starting out with a 1946 Lincoln Wheat set. This one right here, and uh, it's funny because someone on my last video said, can you just stop talking about cut die breaks? And my thought is, no, I, I'm not going to stop talking about it because if everybody's selling it and they're selling for good money, then you guys certainly need to know about it. If it doesn't get talked about at all, people tend to forget or they're going to believe that the market has dropped off significant, significantly. Well, I'm here to tell you it hasn't. It's never been stronger. As a matter of fact, this week we have a couple more coins that kind of uh, built a foundation for the PCMR for this particular episode over the weekend. So the cud you see is actually on the reverse this time. <clears throat> that goes into that wheat stock. You can see it there between 3 and 4 o'clock. A piece of the die had cracked and fallen off, Okay, thereby creating this empty channel on the die during the strikes. All the metal flow goes into that empty cavity, crazing, cre creating the raised anomalies that you see here. Uh, this particular coin ended up selling for $37.99. Um, I even had someone say, well, I've looked at hundreds if not thousands of Lincoln cents and nickels and things that I've never found one of these. Um, you know, are we just looking at the front of the coin? And I'm telling you, no, you are not just looking at the front of the coin. There are a lot of cuts that also exist on the reverse as well. So make sure you're looking at that. Um, and, you know, leave no stone unturned. If you're going to do roll hunts, make sure you're a completionist. You go, you you check out the reverse and the obverse of every single coin. Heck, check the edge if you must. You know, there are color collar cuts on the edge as well that exist. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to cash in. If you're going to put in the work and the, the man hours to do it, at least be complete. All right, so enough about that. Let's go ahead and get into the next one here. Um, so this particular seller does did not have full obverse and reverse photos. Okay, I'm telling you, if you're going to be selling on the platform, take at least one good photo. If it's going to be a stock photo and you're going to be selling a lot of these coins, still do that. Take a good full front and reverse of the coin, along with any close-ups that may be applicable to the sale. So this one right here is a 2009 P. It's a Philadelphia minted uh, formative years Lincoln set. So they did these four different reverses in 2009. This is the one that has a Lincoln sitting on the log reading a book. All right. So there's been a lot of these that have come up with double the die reverses. Uh, most most notable, the doubled fingers and thumbs and things like that. This one you could see right there. There's an extra what looks to be a spiky thumb. Uh, this is actually the FS803. It's WDDR number one. Uh, it's actually quite a strong one. Uh, not saying that you could find this with a naked eye, but you could come pretty close. Um, so there's been quite a few of these that have been discovered. This is one of the bigger ones here. Um, now, these are also quite common, and that has kept prices uh, pretty pretty low on them, you know, to where you're not going to, you know, be a millionaire if you found a whole bunch of these. Like this particular one, I would suspect is in really nice BU condition that's brilliant and uncirculated, and it's still sold for $7.11. So, again, uh, this is not a coin you should be grading at by any means, along with 95% of the other coins we're talking about today, but... Always check the reverse of your LP2s and LP1s, which is the log cabin. There's quite a few different double to dies, and uh, there are buyers for these type of coins. Uh, we have a 1980D Lincoln Memorial Set. This is a double struck example, albeit the secondary strike is about 95% off center. So, you know, it's, it's really wildly off center. 
Um, you don't see much in the way of design details, uh, which kind of uh, keeps the intrigue, the allure, the desirability to own such a coin, you know, rel relatively low. Uh, like this one here managed to squeak out $23.99. Um, the In God We Trust on the bottom left, that little graphic is actually the seller of these coins. So I just wanted to go ahead and mention uh, their name on here, In God We Trust. Pretty cool. Uh, the living motto on every single coin is now a seller. Uh, the next one that we have here, actually this one's pretty neat. But I'm a, this, there's going to be a little bit of a word to the wise, a little bit of a cautionary tale here. 1961. Philadelphia Roosevelt dime. Yes, it is silver. Uh, you can see that long crack, that bisecting crack on the obverse there. Um, and the coin is very well worn. All right. But when we look at the bigger picture, wow, look at that. It's It was actually a clamshell lamination uh, that was forcefully taken apart from the main part of the coin. All right. If you see a clamshell lamination where it's a split right on the edge and you're... Um, it, you know, you're kind of like itching at, you know, breaking this apart so you have two two pieces to the puzzle. Uh, I would encourage you not to do that. Uh, you know, some would say that this is post-mint damage if this happens. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this is actually a pretty wild sale at $101.45. Uh, I've seen a few split clamshells like this, uh, some by accident, some on purpose. Just make sure that you're doing the right thing here with these. Uh, the next one that we have here is actually quite a scarce state of Standing Liberty Quarter. And uh, the big reason why that this is on the list is that the seller had made mention that there is a die crack on the date. You know, it, it kind of looks weird and funny over there. Um, this is uh, a, a type 2 type of uh, coin uh, where they did some design modifications from the type 1, but not all of it to address some of the uh, the wear issues that are that exist on these uh, so it's a 1918S. Um, the seller mentioned a die crack over the date. It kind of looks weird and funny. Not sure that's what it is. Uh, but that is kind of like the big selling feature of this coin. Now, it is a kind of a tougher date. All right. So we have to weigh whether or not the anomaly would kick in more value compared to the actual coin and what it is, uh, which, you know, probably not the case. Um, here, uh, as this is just a really nice type coin for a set. This one sold for $67.22 with 33 total bits. So there was quite a bit of activity on this one regardless whether it's a mint error or not. Uh, we also have this 1982 Lincoln Memorial set. This is the large date variety type. Um, it is a bronze, so it's a pre-83 bronze composition. So at the base right there of Lincoln's bust uh, is another cut, a very slim one in that empty channel right there where VDB's or Victor David Brenner's initials normally sit. Um, so yeah, this one right here, uh, a common area for cut die breaks. This particular coin sold for $16.87. Uh, while cuds are all kind of like at an all-time high right now, the small, tinier, um, you know, uh, examples like this uh that tend to get overlooked uh they, they don't sell to the level of some of the bigger ones we have a couple of them coming up here in the show uh and we also have a 1998 lincoln memorial scent this one's in relatively nice shape too um looks like it's uh you know it was minted yesterday you know it doesn't have a whole lot of wear on there it's got you know plenty of mint red still left over uh, but let's go ahead and uh, explore what the market is doing to what we call the wide AM reverses. Um, these were all struck with proof dies, okay? Because the proof coins from 98 to 2000 all had the wide AM in America reverse on them. So the mint employees accidentally used the proof dies uh, for the production of the business strike coins that you see here. Uh, so when we look up close, you're going to see a pretty defined uh, gap between A&M and America, where on the normal examples, the base of the A&M would be touching. Uh, this particular one sold for $21.07. A uh, little word to you guys that the 1999 is the scarcest of the three dates. And if you're able to find one in this condition that you see on this 98, you know, it's going to be a $150 to $200 coin. Uh, they are, you know, 
uh, quite valuable and people love them. Uh, the next one that we have here, again, another interesting kind of direction of collecting for some folks um, that are very passionate about collecting any off-center or broad strike coinage for the Statehood Quarter Series. These are commonly collected by date and mint mark. So there are people out there that are looking to A, uh, collect one of each date and mint mark, but also to upgrade any existing coins that they may have. You know, they might have, say, this... 99p Connecticut state quarter, um, but not in a great uh, state of grade. All right. So they'll see this one, which looks uh, comparatively a lot better than some of the other Connecticut off center strikes that I've seen, and they'll replace it with this. Um, and as a result, pay up in the market to own much nicer, eye appealing coins. This one ended up selling for $45. It's off center by about 15%. And it's uh, one of the most attractive, um, I guess, off-center strikes on a specific state. Connecticut, with that charter oak on the reverse, is uh, something to behold. Uh, we also had a couple of uh, these 1960 Denver Lincoln cents, a couple big varieties. Here's the RPM number one on a uh, relatively minty red example. When we look at the date there and the mid mark, you can see double D's. All right. So um, for those of you guys that aren't, aren't aware, prior to 1990, mint employees were still hand punching the mint marks into the working dies, which left a lot of room for general human error. Um, you know, God bless them <laughs> uh, for, for multi-striking a lot of these RPMs. It's made coins of the last, you know, prior to 1990, you know, maybe the... 60 years before that, a whole lot more interesting. Uh, this particular example sold for $17.74 with nine bids. And of course, we can't forget that there is also the big dog variety, the small over large date and repun repunchment mark dual variety combo. And you're seeing one in living color right here. Again, this is a very nice example. Uh, when we look up close here, you can actually see uh, the, the most notable part when I'm trying to discern if whether or not I have a small over large date variety, which is a double to die, or just a regular one with some wear. Check out that zero. You can actually see the small zero of the small date over the large zero. You know, and that's kind of like one of your telltale signs there. Uh, and it's also an RPM. Uh, you can see, you know, what looks to be remnants of a secondary Denver mint mark punched north of the primary. It actually kind of touches the bottom kind of curl of the nine as well. Uh, this one sold for $71.26, and so that's with six total bids. Um, this is one of the biggest varieties uh, to find in the 1960s era of Lincoln Cents. Uh, this one right here, quite minor, but I'm willing to bet that the person looking for this one probably was looking for those 90% and 40% silver half dollars. You know, uh, just an avid roll hunter of half dollars. And uh, let's not forget that there are varieties, plenty of them, a lot of double to dies within the candy um, half series. But also mint errors can be found too. A lot of strike throughs, a lot of clash dies. This one, we don't even know what the last date of the uh, the digit of the date is because there was a pretty big strike through there. You know, probably some grease, some dirt, some metal shavings, things like that, all clumped up in a ball that was sitting on the die prior to the strike. So this one right here, a 1970-something, sold for $29.36. Last time I checked, that is roughly three times the value of what a 90% silver half dollar is. So if you're overlooking things like this, because all, all that's on your, um, your agenda is to look for silver, you're going to fail miserably because sometimes it's not all about the silver. You could easily sell this and buy three 50, uh, or 90% uh, silver half dollars at the end of the day to add to your stack. If that's your motivation. Uh, we have a 1954 D Jefferson nickel, a nice early date with a pretty substantial curved clip right there. So uh, pretty nice. Uh, you do have a little bit of Blakesley effect on the reverse side of the coin, which is a little bit noticeable. This one right here sold for $16.50. 
Clips tend to be on the lower end of the totem pole for mint errors, but this coin kind of gives you guys a little bit insight of what one might sell for if it did if you had one in the open market. And we also have a 1966 Roosevelt dime clip as well. Uh, again, you know, I've found quite a few of these over the years. Uh, and they're always a welcome find. You know, back then they used to be, you know, a buck or two. Uh, up until, you know, since the beginning of the pandemic, which we are no longer in, by the way. Um, you know, these things have uh, appreciated in value. You know, a, a good, healthy margin. Uh, like this one here is sold for $17.99. And I tell you what, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I would trade this for $17 every day of the week um, because I was selling these for about $2 back five years ago. The, another uh, was 1982 large date bronze Lincoln Memorial cent. Uh, this one was has a 18% indent. All right. So the indent occurs when there are two planchets overlapping in the striking chamber. So one of the things that obviously happens here is that the collar probably has malfunctioned at this point because it's not completely engaged. Uh, the collar is what keeps one singular coin in the striking chamber during that action. So if it's not there, it's going to cause all sorts of things like out of collar, um, off center strikes, broad strikes, things like this. Um, this one right here ended up selling for $46.45, uh, which is always a great amount of money for an indent um, with no discernible brockage or anything like that. Uh, we also have this one here. And, you know, if we remember, you know, just a few short years ago, there were a number of pretty big mint errors that included retained cuds and die breaks and all sorts of things, not only on the 2021 Philadelphia Lincoln cent that you see here, but also on like the Wilma Mankiller quarter and a few others uh, that are quite notable. So here we are three years removed from this beast. And, uh, you know, everybody had fun looking for these. Uh, at one time, you know, they sold for two to $300 a pop. Uh, you know, are they still selling for that today? Uh, maybe, Higher end, uncirculated pieces. This particular one looks like it's been around the block a few times. It's got a few spots on the coin as well. So it's not the most beautiful example that I've encountered. Uh, this coin sold for $129.36 with four total bids on this one. So again, not worth zero. Still carries quite a bit of value. If you come across these, do not toss them out. You'll be throwing away $100 plus. If you did, uh, we also have this one. This is a beautiful one. It's uh, an undated Lincoln Memorial set. Uh, looks to be a copper coated zinc planchet uh, composition. So post 1982. Uh, but this one was struck uh, through a kind of like mid stage cap die um, because there is a little bit of brockage on there. You can see the brockage of the Lincoln Memorial um, that was uh, on that. Uh, that cap die um, that that had translated into what you see here. Um, so again, this is pretty nice. You have a fully struck reverse, and then you have that soft mushy obverse there. The coin sold for fifty two dollars and forty five cents. It was a quick little buy it now strike. Uh, I believe it was like forty nine ninety nine plus shipping. Uh, and yeah, here's the uh, here's the nuke. Of the week, if maybe not the month. 1988 Lincoln Memorial Cent. So, cuds, man. Uh, we gotta talk about it. Because, you know, if they're front and center in a lot of people's minds. People have them. They're selling it. And they're making a pretty big killing off of them. Like this one here. The cud is on the reverse. Okay? It's one of the bigger cuds I've ever seen on the reverse of a coin. Alright? And there are too many of them. And the ones that do exist to this day... They have huge values from one to five hundred dollars. Okay, so this one right here, add this one to that list, um, you know, and you have the fair amount of weakness on the obverse where that cut is on the other side of the coin. So this one, I'm happy to announce, that it did sell for a hundred and fifty-four dollars. Whereas if that size cut was on the obverse, it probably would sell for half that. Uh, so again, it's all about perspective. This one here is uh, kind of a rarity. We don't see this particular cud on the marketplace maybe once, twice a year if you're lucky. 
And that's how scarce this one is. Uh, neat one here, 2006 Denver, South Dakota State Quarter with double clips. It's got two clips and then all the blinksy effect that you need uh, to make this thing shake and quake in your hand. Uh, pretty cool. Now, you know, clips are, a, again, a minor, very common uh, mint error that can be found out there in the wild today. Uh, but on something like this, $34.95 was the sale for a double-clipped Statehood Quarter. Again, it's the Statehood Quarter series that really makes this thing, uh, you know, just perform at a whole different level. So if you got them, save them and, uh, you know, be sure to sell them, you know, while the market is high. What the heck happened here? So, you know, at first, at first I thought, okay, well, this coin is not really an error. This thing, <clears throat> this thing was just ground down to death. Um, it's a 1968D candy half dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's a ragged clip, actually. And it took a while for me to, you know, just, just to really kind of like look at it. I looked at the, the rims. The rims were very irregular, you know, um, uh, on this one. And, uh, you know, when you look at actually the edge as well, uh, you could see that uh, that it has kind of like that granular granite pattern, you know, like, uh, you know, it, it wasn't ground down uh, by hand, but it was, you know, just a, uh, a defective planchet that had split at one point. Uh, kind of similar to the... Uh, uh, the Northern Nevada coin um, company uh, in Reno, the owner actually has a Carson City Morgan dollar. Uh, they call it the Broken CC, which is a defective planchet that looks exactly like this. Although in his case, he has both pieces. This person only has one side of it. Um, so this one did sell for $84 with 15 bids. I just thought it was a pretty interesting, uh, you know, kind of conversation piece for tonight's show. Um, you know, again, heat caution, a lot of these are generally damaged. This one looks to be legit. Uh, even though this particular image isn't the highest, crispest quality type, you know, it's got a little bit of, um, you know, out of focusness to it. Um, I, I think I'm still bought in by the fact that this one is a legitimate mid error. Uh, we also have this one here too. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that it has what we call the ring of death on the obverse, that's where uh, um, that's what they call roller damage uh, as a result of the crimping on one end with the uh, the roll paper machine. Um, this one, this one coin here was at one point the end roll piece to a full roll. Um, so the little thumb that usually crimps that end in had made contact to the face of the coin, but instead, uh, we we're just going to kind of like close one eye and then just focus on the reverse because this is the wounded Eagle reverse Sacagawea dollar, uh, only found on the 2000 Philadelphia P mint, uh, examples. Uh, so this, this one, uh, still a great chase. It's the FS901 in the ter uh, cherry pickers guide. You can see the, uh, the dual die gouges there right on the, uh, the breast feathers and wing area, uh, which are raised on the coin. So you can actually feel it on the coin. Uh, I own a few examples of this one and, uh, you know, make no mistake about it. It's very discernible. Uh, this one sold for $99.99. Again, that's with the damage on the obverse. Uh, there are other examples I've seen without that. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to buy, you know, just kind of hold tight. There's quite a few of these. They're common, but boy, they are valuable. Uh, they have a lot of value. Uh, we do have a couple lots uh, to kind of close things out here on the PCMR. We have this lot of four various... Uh, off-center strikes and broad strikes, a 1990 Lincoln cent, uh, which looks to be more off-center, a 2000D Jefferson nickel that's off-center by about 55%, an undated Roosevelt dime that's off-center, again, about 55%, and then a broad struck 1985P Washington quarter. All right, so we talk about bulk lots as a way of, uh, you know, kind of enhancing our reselling experience, right? We buy these for a bulk price, quote unquote, and then uh, turn around and sell each coin individually. The idea here is we're trying to double our money. Uh, when someone sells in bulk, 
they're willing to take a discount by selling it as a group. Uh, so this one here is sold for $56.24 with 12 bids. Um, it's not the best lot to buy if you're trying to double your money. I don't think that doubling is uh, even within possibility. You might be able, you know, to, um, you know, grab a hold of like maybe a 20 to 25% profit margin if you sold each one individually. Uh, but, you know, that's not a whole lot. You know, I'd probably focus on other lots like this one right here. Wow. Uh, this is a lot of seven broad struck or off center washing quarters and they're all drop dead gorgeous each and every single coin uncirculated there's uh five 1980 philadelphia quarters there's one 79p quarter and 95p washington as well um so the seven coins together sold for 77 dollars and 85 cents with three bids um based off of the knowledge that I've gained uh, over the years with these is that they tend to sell for between twenty and thirty dollars in this condition. Um, so this is a, a prototypical lot that you would buy just to flip. All right, uh, and th there was plenty of opportunity here with this one, and uh, whoever got this one either added a really nice collection to their uh, or a really nice set to their collection. Or they had found, uh, you know, the goose that laid multiple golden eggs, you know, that will allow you to resell these for a pretty good profit. Uh, and then the last coin tonight, uh, of course, we cannot forget, uh, you know, rest in peace to the Mamba Bat that ended up with the big strike through on its face. The, these still are remarkable. And, you know, they got up to as high as 1,500. There are actually pristine graded examples that are still uh, out in the marketplace and available for that kind of money. Um, but if you're going to find one in change today, and these these are out there. There's quite a few of these in circulation. Um, they, they do carry um, some pretty delectable amount of money. You know, if you're looking to make a few hundred bucks, this is the coin to do it. And if you found multiples of these, you know, again, congratulations are in order. Uh, this is such a sweet find. Uh, I've always wanted one of these, but I want a nice pristine one. I'm not willing to get one that's, you know, circulated, but there are other people that will pay the money for them. Uh, this one right here is sold for $205. Boom. Uh, that's the way to do it. And that's with two bids. So there are a few people interested in this one. Um, yeah, and that's kind of like, you know, the, the 24 lots or whatever that we had just looked through, it represents a small sample size of what exists out there. You know what? I look up and down the list. You know what we did not talk about for the first time in a long time? Paper money. We did not talk about currency, but that's also another thing that you can focus in on is fancy serial number hunting finding some of those uh, paper money errors that exist out there. Um, there's plenty of stuff to find out there, okay? And, you know, you put in the dedication and the time, you will find your lion's share of that of those riches. So that's going to go ahead and wrap things up. Of course, the information in this video is for educational use only, not financial advice. Please do collect and grade responsibly. And that's it. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to today's content. If you like what you see and, uh, you know, again, we got the April, um, giveaway event on whatnot, uh, for anyone that buys anything, you, you buy 10 items, that's 10 entries, uh, for the end of month giveaway. You just need one entry, uh, folks, uh, to make it happen. So come check things out. Uh, I will do a formal video on the coins for the giveaway, uh, here this coming week. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And I shall see you guys on the next coin video. So long.